Hello everyone and welcome to this mini lecture on Augustus Baldwin, Baldwin Longstreet and uh, his short story The Fight. This will be a brief introduction to Longstreet and the story The Fight to kind of give you a few little things to work with as you get into the story. So let's start with Longstreet. Longstreet uh, was born in 1790. He lived to 1870, a good 80 years, um, and he was born and raised in Georgia and had a very long um, overall successful career. He went to Yale, which uh, again is a, is a, even for those times, is one of the well-known schools. Um, and he had a wide range of, well, uh, professions throughout his life. He was a lawyer, a judge, writer, a Methodist minister. He was also a college president. Um, in an, well, to a lesser degree, or, or what is uh, one thing that has tarnished his his reputation is that he was also an active Confederate. That he he genuinely believed in the Confederacy and its attempt to become its own country and break away from the North. So there there's some slight tarnish by that, and this is probably why Longstreet doesn't get read as much uh, in modern times. But you know, we do have the story, of the fight. Uh, which within the story we see two of his we see two of Longstreet's major contributions or, or major styles at play his his humorous uh, his humorism right it's it is within the story it's clearly a light-hearted story it's not a a story in which we're meant to cry or, or which we're meant to feel anguish but we're supposed to kind of get a chuckle out of and of course regionalist and when we talk about regionalism as a writer, the idea is that the place that the story takes, that the story happens to take place in, comes prominent. You can, it's almost tangible, um, or a tangible character within the story itself, or there's just something that is representative by the space and the characters um, and where they're from. <clears throat> A good example of that um, in modern times, I would say Stephen King. Stephen King is a could be considered a regional writer in that so many of his his writings take place in in Maine, in Massachusetts, and New England, and there's continually this voice and this attitude and this idea about people from those parts. So let's talk about the fight. The fight is this this short story um, in which you have these two characters really fa you know try to well. They're friendly, largely, and then they eventually don't become friendly. And we look at, you know, we want to know why that happens and what the fight is all about and all of that. But <clears throat> let's look at the fight. Uh, let's look at that opening, or, or a few different things about it. First, of course, it was published in 1835, um, and it was published in a, uh, in a magazine uh, called Georgia Scenes. And we have this opening in the younger days of the Republic. There lived in the country of uh, in the country of blank two men who were admitted on all hands to be the very best in the country, which, in the Georgia vocabulary, means they could flog any other two men in the in the county. Each man, uh, each through many a hard fought battle, had acquired the mastery of his own battalion, but they lived on opposite sides of the courthouse and in different battalions, consequently, they were seldom thrown together. So we have just th this opening, right? In the younger days of the Republic, there lived in the county of blank two men who were admitted on all hands to be the very best men in the county. Right, so we're, we're first told these are the best men, but of course, Longstreet breaks us down what that means in, in Georgia locale, in Georgia, you know, what that means in Georgia is that they could beat anybody up, anybody else up, they, they were the toughest men, right, each had, each, through many a hard fought battle, had acquired mastery of his own battalion, so they fought their way up, right, they have really, when we say the best men here, we're talking the best military men. They lived on opposite sides of the courthouse and in different battalions. Consequently, they were seldom thrown together. <clears throat> so I want to kind of just break this open a little bit that we have these two people. They are the best, but they live on opposite sides of the courthouse. And I think that that's a very interesting idea because if we look at this story and we look at that it was 1835 and we have these two characters that are 
They, there's a lot of similarity, um, but they live on opposite sides of a courthouse. Not just any house, but a courthouse. And kind of what does the court represent? It represents law. It represents, you know, how things are done. And and in different battalions, right? And we can hear in that, you know, in different places. They didn't occupy the same space. So Longstreet is setting up these two characters in ways in which we can actually see some similarities between um, these two characters as representative of the North and the South. Now it's 1835 when the story is published, so it's written in the 1830s, and we do know by this point we are starting to see a difference between the North and South. We are starting to see the start of the abolition movement. We are starting to see tension around slavery and kind of who gets to say what slave, you know, what what states have slavery or not. So let's look at our two main characters here, right? Billy Stallions, who was of the upper battalion and six foot one, right? So we have Billy Stallions now. If you look at that name and you just take it at face value, it doesn't really mean much. But Stallions, Stallions is the name, of course, of a horse. And he's from the upper battalion. But then we have Bob Durham, who's the other you know great fighter here. And he's from the lower battalion. Of course, Durham, if you aren't familiar with, Durham is also the name of a bull. So we have a horse and a bull. And the horse is from the upper battalion. The bull is from the lower battalion. And what's interesting is you could extend this further, right? You could look at this in a more, again, if you wanted to pit or understand this as the North and the South fighting, you have Billy Stallions, who's from the upper battalion. That could be understood as North. And the reason I say that is if Bob Durham is from the lower battalion, if you look at those names, you have a, a horse and a bull, or a horse and a cow. The differences there make sense when you look at, of course, the differences in the in in the states at this time. In that, a stallion, a horse, is the main means of transportation, is the main means of getting business done in the early industrialized North. Whereas the cow symbolizes much more the farm and the rural south. And so you could see these, you know, with upper and lower battalion, you could see these as the north and south facing off. Uh, you could see this as, in some ways, Longstreet really kind of talking about there is a, this almost inevitable fight that's going to occur between the, between the north and the south. And just to, to you know, extend the use of names within this story. We have Ramsey Sniffle, who's five foot nothing, and he's from Richmond, Virginia. A complexion that a corpse would have disdained. You know, this is the description: a complexion that a corpse would have disdained to own, and an abdominal rotundity that was quite unprocessing. This is fascinating because Ramsey off uh, also sounds a bit or can resemble in some ways a ram right if we're going on the this this naming thing and five foot nothing right so the other one you know we have we have billy who's six foot one and bob who's just an inch short of that but Sn Ram ramsey sniffle is five foot nothing and he's from richmond virginia so, and he's a, co a complexion that a corpse would have disdained to own, and an abominable rotundity that was quite un, 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 pre, 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 possessing. Oh, wow! I butchered that one. And I think Ran Ramsey could see in many ways, particularly being from Richmond, Virginia, which is of course near Washington D.C is, you know, could be understood as Congress, could be understood as the government, could be understood as this person that's really setting these two up to fight. Um, and, you know, if we think about what a ram does, what, is they, what do they do? They butt their heads, right? They, they, they charge into areas or they really kind of get into places. They ram. Um, and so we have this really interesting setup among these three characters. And I would say with Ramsey being from Richmond, he's not from, you know, he's not in the upper battalion, he's not in the lower battalion, he's not from Georgia, he's from Richmond. You know, he is putting his, he's trying to 
push these two people together into a fight. Um, and I think somewhere within that, you know, Longstreet is saying that, you know, you might have these two sections of the country, the North and the South, which are both upstanding, wonderful uh, entities, but it's Ramsey. It's it's that middle. It's that that Virginia place, Washington D.C. that is really trying to get them to fight. All right. So I hope this gave you a few little ideas and tools to work with with the short story um, as you get into it and see kind of how these characters are set up and and what they're doing, even how they fight and what the fight is supposed to mean. Um, I hope this gave you some good structure for that. All right. Thank you for listening. See you in the next video.